This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. I would like to next introduce uh, Margaret Leinen. Uh, she is the Vice Chancellor for Marine Sciences at UC San Diego. She's the Director of Scripps Institution of Oceanography uh, and the Dean of the School of Marine Sciences. Now, hands down, Margaret has the best office on campus. <laughs> Out her back door, actually, which is a sliding glass door onto a deck that's on the sand, is this beautiful view of the ocean, La Jolla Shores, uh, and uh, the working research peer of Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Dr. Leinen joined Scripps Institution of Oceanography in October of, of 2013, so just about two years ago. She uh, is, uh, has an extensive national and international experience in ocean science, global climate and environmental issues, uh, federal research administration, and nonprofit startups. She is a researcher herself in paleooceanography and paleoclimatology. Uh, and it is with great pleasure and deep respect that I bring Margaret forward. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We're going to change the schedule just slightly uh, because we want to make um, it possible for Mayor Faulkner to be able to uh, attend his next uh, commitment. So I'm going to introduce the mayor. He's going to speak, and then I'll come back. Uh, it's really a pleasure to introduce our, our San Diego mayor to all of you. Uh, he is no stranger to the University of California, San Diego. He's no stranger to Scripps Oceanography, and he is no stranger to this topic. He reflects a new breed of community leader who really understands that science and technology are the keys to the innovation economy. And he routinely uh, connects the two to our economy. Uh, he also understands the importance of green energy and uh, all of the environmental aspects that we'll be talking about over the next couple of days uh, that lead to carbon neutrality. And he uh, understands that these are actually uh, keys to a more vibrant economy and to a vibrant future for our region. He has led many efforts in San Diego, both on the carbon neutrality side, uh, trying to, to mitigate emissions, and also on the side of understanding how uh, these impacts will play out in San Diego and how we can adapt to them. It is a great pleasure to introduce you to him, Mayor Faulkner. Thank you. Well, thank you, Margaret. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Welcome to San Diego. Terrible day outside. Uh, if we stood out there, if we were out there all day, we'd never get anything done. And so I'm actually probably glad we're indoors now, but what a reminder of why we're here. Don't you think? I mean, what, what a just beautiful, gorgeous San Diego day with our ocean rolling in, uh, fresh, clean air. Uh, this is what this is, this is all about. And Margaret, thank you for that uh, great introduction. And, and Sandra, and, and everybody at, at UC and Scripps Institute uh, of Oceanography, uh, and everybody throughout, uh, throughout the UC system and throughout California. Uh, welcome to San Diego. I'm glad you're here. By the way, I want you to spend lots of money for the next two days, so make sure you get out and do a little. I have to say that as, as mayor. But look, you're, you're all sustainability leaders. Uh, and that is something that we are very, very proud of, of the efforts that all of us are doing here in San Diego, with the emphasis on the words collaboration. Uh, and I learned that a long time ago. If you're not working together, 
uh, we can't achieve what we need to do. But the fact that we have so many of you here from throughout the state and indeed throughout the country, um, we're proud of the efforts that UC is doing. We're very proud of the efforts that Scripps is doing here in San Diego. You have a mayor that supports you. You have a mayor that stands with you. And you have a mayor that understands the work that we're doing here uh, is reverberating indeed across the country and across the world. And so these next two days as we come together, um, I think it's very, very important that we demonstrate our continued leadership. Not only thought leadership, but leadership in putting it into action. And I spend a lot of time on both um, because you have to translate, obviously, great ideas into what we're doing. You know, when I, when I think about the work, what we've been doing here in San Diego, as you look outside and you, you saw our, our great, precious environment, look, our job is, is to protect that and to turn it over to future generations. I mean, we're all, we're all in these positions for a, for a short amount of time, right? It's, it's what we do uh, while we're here. And that's why I think the work that we're doing is so critical. Um, and people are, are taking notice. I mean, one of the things that uh, just happened a couple of months ago, some of you may have, have seen National Geographic named San Diego as one of the world's smartest cities. They picked the only city that they picked in North America. Um, and they did it even though I was mayor. And so I thought that, <laughs> But, but, they're, but they're recognizing what's going on here in San Diego. They're recognizing that, that, that innovation in our economy and that synergy and everything that's happening. Um, there is great things uh, that is going on. And in fact, we represent, the, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm glad Sandra talked about it, this is about public and private sectors coming together for, for real solutions. That is the future. And, you know, one of the things that, that we are bringing forward here in San Diego, because I'm a big believer and you have to act locally. Uh, we're bringing before the City Council here our Climate Action Plan uh, in just a couple of months, and it's a plan that has support from environmental leaders, from business leaders, from community leaders that we've worked uh, a very long time on. Um, because it's an issue that affects all of our neighborhoods, every part of San Diego, and indeed when we look at what Clean Tech is doing and others here, um, we're moving forward uh, together. Um, just last week, I introduced uh, a plan, by the way, as we're continuing to do great work here in solar, where we're doing 25 new city buildings. All we're going to have solar in city you know, locations throughout. Our libraries, our city administration, you know, all, it's what we should be doing. And oh, by the way, we're going to save $20 million over the next 20 years. So um, we're, not, we're putting our money where our mouth is, in our, and we're not stopping there as we look at so many other opportunities that we have. We've identified another 40 sites that we're gonna be doing solar, just as one small example. But steps like this are what's very important for us as we're moving towards our goal to have all electricity used in the city of San Diego, all electricity to be from renewable sources by 2035. That is something that we know is achievable. That is something that we know is the right thing to do for our cities, the right thing to do for our state, um, and it's the right thing to do for our region. So. Uh, with your help, and I mean it, with, with your help, we are committed to be, continue to be a leader in innovation and sustainability here in San Diego. And I'll tell you, we are delighted to partner with UCSD, with Scripps Institute of Oceanography, as we support your efforts, as we learn from your efforts and take these best practices across the country uh, and across the world. Look, it's about a, a cleaner, brighter San Diego. It's about a cleaner, brighter state of California, uh, United States, and, and the globe. And so, again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to San Diego. I'm, I'm proud you're here. I'm very proud of the efforts that, uh, that you're doing. Uh, you're on the cutting edge for all of the right reasons. So enjoy your time here in San Diego. And uh, as I said, let's keep it up. The, the, the city, the state, the nation is behind our efforts. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good time, San Diego. So now uh, I'll welcome you to University of California, San Diego, and this wonderful venue at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. It's, uh, uh, I think, very fitting uh, that this carbon neutrality um, meeting is here at Scripps, which has played such a large part uh, in the history and the development of our understanding of climate and of anthropogenic impacts on climate. Uh, there have been 
uh, so many environmental firsts here in California, and I think that uh, this idea of the UC system being the leader for the state in achieving car uh, carbon neutrality for the system in such a short time uh, and so aggressively is so important and so fitting to that leadership tradition of the UC system. Uh, we could argue about when the modern era of climate began, uh, but for me, I think that it began in the 50s right here at Scripps. But at that time, uh, most people were aware that we were putting CO2 into the atmosphere, but the assumption was that the ocean was capable of taking up all of that CO2. And it wasn't until one of my predecessors, Roger Revell, uh, director of Scripps Institution of Oceanography, joined with Epstein to publish a paper that very dramatically showed that the ocean would not take up all of the CO2, uh, that it would take up about a quarter of it, but that the rest was going to be a lingering problem. He called attention to that in the scientific community and then used his uh, formidable history as the first technical director of the Office of Naval Research to bring that to a national level of understanding. And he uh, really led an effort amongst so scientists and policymakers uh, to, to um, uh, to capture people's attention about it. He served as the founding chairman of the first Committee on Climate Change in the Ocean uh, during the International Geophysical Year in 1957. And it was about that time that he recruited uh, a bright young scientist from another California institution, but not a UC institution, and that was, of course, Charles David Keeling, uh, who came to us from Caltech. And what he was, what Roger was interested in was having somebody that could really document the, the CO2 story and to document what was happening to the atmosphere. And uh, Dave was uh, an amazing analyst and he was a, a um, stickler for both precision and accuracy. And of course, his interest and his measurements started what has become known as the Keeling Curve, uh, that iconic uh, image of our impact on the, on the uh, atmosphere and its impact on climate. And about uh, 100 yards from here, uh, there is a building uh, just down this, uh, this little street uh, named Ritter Hall, and on it you'll find a plaque uh, where this past year uh, the American Chemical Society named the Keeling Curve a National Historical Chemical Landmark. And uh, it's uh, uh, amazing from a chemistry point of view, but also so important to all of us and to this uh, very important enterprise that we're engaged in. Dave set up stations around the world uh, there's one right out on Scripps Pier, uh, but the most famous, of course, is still uh, the one at the top of Mauna Loa, and it's that record of measurements uh, that we now know as the Keeling Curve. Uh, Ramanathan, who uh, will be, uh, who has led this effort uh, to have this meeting on behalf of the the faculty of the UC system, uh, is also an important player in this. Uh, when he isn't out influencing global leaders to, uh, to address climate change, like uh, Pope Francis, uh, he is an atmospheric chemist uh, who made his career in helping us understand the role of, of um, uh, elements in the, the atmosphere, and most importantly, called our attention to the role of that other carbon, the black carbon, in the atmosphere and its potent role in climate change. Uh, uh, and that sort of innovation from uh, Scripps and from UC goes on. Uh, most recently, uh, our uh, 
development of uh, a free-floating autonomous uh, float for the ocean uh, that can record uh, the physical parameters of the ocean for the up, uh, entire upper uh, 6,500 feet of the ocean, the Argo network, uh, is another example. And most recently, uh, that has allowed scientists to be able to look at the heat content of the ocean and how this radiative force, forcing and warming of the atmosphere has also impacted the ocean. Across uh, UC San Diego, interest in policy, interest in new energy te technologies, interest in the impacts of climate change, and most importantly, impact in, uh, interest in how we can adapt to that uh, has led us to develop uh, a university-wide initiative on climate change impacts and adaptation uh, that is now, uh, has now been um, endowed as a new center for the university, and we're currently um, uh, searching for eight new interdisciplinary faculty members to join the rest of the UC San Diego faculty in this important enterprise. Uh, this kind of observation, this kind of interdisciplinary uh, study, this kind of attention to not, not only the cause of changes, but their impacts and their solutions uh, is a hallmark of UC San Diego. It's a hallmark of the UC system. And I think that uh, this continuum of innovation from the, from the first uh, detection and attribution to impact, adaptation, and also mitigation is really what we're talking about. And it's so much a part of the UC system, it's so much a part of UC San Diego, and so much a part of Scripps that it's very fitting uh, that, that people have come from all over to pay attention to UC as a leader, uh, a leader in really saying that this is something we can do, uh, this is something we are doing, uh, and this is something that will att attract the interest uh, of the entire world. I'm so proud to join all of the rest of you in being a part of this effort, being a part of the leadership of the UC system. Thank you so much.